Hello and welcome back to coverage here at U.S. Nationals. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Reed Duke, and it is time for the finals. Both of these players will have, uh, well, they will have breathed a bit of a sigh of relief, I, I would say, at getting on to the World Magic Cup team. They really kind of reach that peak here, and they know that, uh, well, they get to play with you, Reed, coming up here uh, in, in a couple months' time. But there is yet a task to do here before, before both of them. One of these players is going to be the U.S. national champion and win $5,000. The other one, not the U.S. national champion, but look at 3K, not bad. Yeah, well, we certainly cannot say that the pressure is off. At least both of these players know that they're going to be going home with something uh, something great. You know, so it's not going to be a failure of a weekend for whichever player loses here, although you can, you can bet that they're both trying their hardest to win. A uh, little bit of a bad start for Jerry Thompson. Looks like he went down to five cards, missed his second land drop, and now he has found a couple lands, but this is exactly where the blue-black deck wants to be with Search for Ascanta in play and, an e and a clean board. All right. Bristling Hydra, no sir, says Oliver Tomiko, and this one's starting to slowly slip away here from Jerry. Needs to keep adding threats to the board, and he's got another one. Oh, but another counter here from Tomiko. Yeah, so if Oliver can find a sixth land off his search for Oskanta, that turns on his two gear hulk so he can continue just countering whatever Jerry plays. He doesn't have it? Ooh, he, he scried a sensor to the top with the logic of, uh, you know, maybe Jerry will play Ooh. a third Bristling Hydra, maybe he will play a fifth land in a Glorybringer. Oh, well, wow. Punished there by... He, he, he actually cycled away that sensor because Jerry decided to play and he hit a land there. It might wind up being as costly as possible. Well, maybe not. The, the, the Search for Escanta transforming does provide a sixth mana source sure, all, all sure. on its own. But he did cycle into a Evolving Wilds, effectively a tapped land that he couldn't play last turn. But we talked about this earlier in the weekend, Reed. We should revisit it here. The subtle power bump of transforming an enchantment into a land that taps for mana this turn. Yeah, it's huge. Um, getting to six mana ahead of schedule for blue-black control can easily determine a game. Uh, those gear hulks, the normal reason why you would be hesitant about playing three, four copies of a card like that is just you draw two and you can't actually cast them until you've able, been able to draw and, ca and play out six lands. But search for Ascanta if you get that six land one turn ahead of schedule, or in this case, Oliver was struggling to find lands off the top of his library, and the search for Ascanta bailed him out. Um, it's, it's a huge, uh, huge benefit. That's not really so obvious when you first read the card. That's right. You really tend to focus on that activated ability of Ascanta the Sunken Ruin. But as we know, these control decks are very mana hungry. They'll take as much as they can get, and getting a free one in there is real nice. In the meantime, Torrential Gearhulk takes a bite out of Jerry Thompson here, knocks him down to 15. And we've somehow got a race on our hands here, though. Oliver's well positioned to win it as he has another copy of Torrential Gear Hulk in hand. He's not going to cast it this turn, though. He's just going to activate Search or Azkanta as it sits. Yeah, I don't know how Jerry's getting out of this now. He just revealed another Disallow. In the meantime, Oliver immediately goes to combat. Jerry's down to 10. Jerry continues to attack with both of his creatures, knocking Oliver down to 14, but Oliver says, yeah, man, sure, have a servant. Doesn't bother me. He's going to activate Oscon to the Sunken Ruin once again, and he's going to find himself an Essence Scatter. Now his hand is Essence Scatter, plus he's got a Torrential Gear Hulk in there still and a Disallow, plus the other cards he had before that. Ugh. This one's getting out of hand quickly, the grip isn't it? Grip is tightening. Indeed. Yeah, it looks like game one is going to go to Oliver Tomiko in a few turns here, most likely, though. Let's see if there's a miracle in store here for Jerry. But Jerry's down to five. Doesn't make a thopter there. Just going to play another Search of the Conduit. Wouldn't be surprised to see Oliver just can't, uh, counter this one. 
He's got counters to spare, and this does represent not only the, the Servant, but also another Thopter. Oliver has an embarrassment of riches. He can pretty much do anything he wants with any of the cards in his hand, and it will lead to a pretty secure victory. He's going to take a slightly different route here. He's going to let the conduit, the servant, survive, uh, resolve after this is over. But instead, he's going to strand that energy effectively by just killing the Whirler Virtuoso with Essence Extraction. What? This does kind of force the issue here on Oliver to use a Disallow here to protect a Gear Hulk, though he doesn't have to. So the reason Jerry's doing this in response is if the Harness Lightning gets countered, he wants to be able to use the energy to make a Thopter with Whirler Virtuoso, but if the but he can't make the Thopter first because then Harness Lightning would be unable to kill Torrential Gear Hulk. Still Jerry's turn here. He gets in for one. Wow, a third gear hulk for Oliver. Yeah, these are some big draws here for Oliver Tomiko. And now he's put Jerry into chump lock mode. And again, this one just looks like it's about locked up here for Oliver. And that was a counter spell to finish things off. Oliver Tomiko wins a relatively quick game one here over Jerry Thompson. And is one step away from being national champion. Players are going to consult lists as well as sideboards. Why don't we do the same? And why don't we do that too, Reed? Uh, what, do you, what do you make of the sideboard situation that, we, that our players find themselves in? Are, are things going to improve for Jerry? He's got two games to win back to back if he's going to knock off Oliver here. Things are most definitely going to improve for Jerry. The cards that really catch my eye are two copies of Life Crafter's Beast Jerry. That's a card that Jerry was uh, sort of alone in bringing on, on his teamer sideboard. Many of the other uh, teamer players that we had on camera over the course of the weekend did not have access to that. But that's excellent against blue-black control as Oliver Tomiko cannot remove it from the board once it gets there. Uh, in addition to that, three Spell Pierce, two Supreme Will, those are the, the slam dunk cards, and then he can also consider Appetite for the Unnatural Death or uh, Death Gorge Scavenger. On Oliver's side, no obvious cards that he definitely is going to bring in, but the tools that he has at his, at his disposal include Gifted Aetherborn, Duress, Jace's Defeat, Essence Extraction, and Negate. I think he likely will bring in Jace's Defeat, since he can uh, use that to counter one of Jerry's counter spells, mm -hmm. or more likely a Rogue Refiner or Whirler Virtuoso. There's a lot of good targets there. Yeah, Jason's Defeat, a really, really nice techie card from Oliver. I like that it's a countermeasure against what you're expecting the teamer player to bring in, but also just an additional way to counter those really problematic creatures. He might also bring in uh, some number of Gifted Aetherborns if he wants additional ways to beat Resolve Bristling Hydras. And then uh, Duress and Negate are just depending on, on how much he wants to fight Jerry on the, the permission battle axis versus how much he wants to just focus on creatures. Chat wants to know if you're going to join your teammates and wear a hat. Maybe if I get a bad haircut. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We could probably arrange that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of hat would you wear? Oliver style or Jerry style? Or maybe like a like a bowler or something. Top hat? Like one of those Uncle Sam top hats? Yeah, a big tall one. Yeah. Conquistador helmet? Well, we're kind of looking for more 
United States centric. Hence, hence the the top hat. Jerry did his best with five cards in game one, but having both a bad start and being so far down on resources against what's already a pretty tough matchup in game one, he was not able to put up the fight he wanted or needed. But after sideboard, things get a lot more even. And uh, this sideboarded game with Jerry on the play is going to be the one where he has his largest advantage. Wow. I'm not going to lie, Reed. The, uh, the hat suggestions are coming in fast and furious here in the chat. Some pretty good ones, too. Cowboy hat. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. It's could, very American. I could see it. I could see it. An American flag trucker's cap. Okay. Hard to get more American than that. Somebody just said you should wear a bandana. Okay. But I, I'm not, I don't know. I was thinking hats. All right, guys, let's get all shuffled up. We're done talking about hats here. Wow. Jerry really has his hands full, though. This is, uh, this is a tall order. Yeah, he's got to win the final two games of the tournament if, or he's going to wind up in second place. These two players really dominated the tournament. Jerry being our second seed coming in, one of only two players to never take a second loss. And uh, best of my knowledge, Jerry has not lost in standard yet. He took his one loss in, in booster draft. Oliver was our last undefeated player at 9-0 before finishing at 10-2 with excellent tiebreakers. Good start here for Jerry. He's got an untapped botanical sanctum here to play an attune with ether and when it comes to one drops for this team or energy deck that's about as good as they get he's got all three colors here on turn two and two energy in the bank already so he'd love to see a threat but no he's just going to pass the turn back and oliver can breathe a sigh of relief there there was no long tusk cub because now the shields are up, as they say. He can start using essence scatters to contain the board here. And Oliver does just that. He draws himself a fatal push, which looked pretty good. It would have been nice in his opener, I think, but it turns out no targets for it as of yet. Though maybe he can leverage that um, field of ruin. another attune and i think that jerry's just verbalizing his intent here looks like he's, he's gonna, gonna search go for get an, an island. island yeah and then so one th cool thing about this turn is is jerry actually does have a fourth land in hand but he and he had the option therefore to play around sensor by casting whirler virtuoso first but he elected not to do that because oliver used essence scatter the previous turn when he could have used a sensor if he had had one. So Jerry thought, let me not inconvenience myself and cost myself extra energy to play around a card that Oliver probably doesn't have. Very smart and a subtle interaction that is easily overlooked. Another cool interaction there, I mentioned this a minute ago, but the Field of Ruin play there from Oliver. Yep, turning on Revolt for Fatal Push and not putting the control player behind on mana. In fact, actually finding Oliver his second source of black mana, which could be important going down the road. There's four mana now for Tomiko, and this is a big turn. This is usually where you're tempted to not do anything if you're sitting across from a control player, but it's probably wrong against the player playing Glimmer of Genius. And Jerry does have the option here to just go bang, glory bringer.
Okay, Death Gorge Scavenger, that did come in off, off Jerry's sideboard. Um, mostly just to have extra creatures, but can also have some relevant impact against Search for Ascanta, preventing that from transforming too early. Hmm. Oliver let it resolve. That means that Essence Scatter is going to get gobbled up by the Scavenger. One Thopter is going to hit. Limiting the options of Torrential Gear Hulk. But here's Oliver with Frasca's Contempt to take down the Scavenger. myself there from earlier. It looks like it's hieroglyphic illumination, not glimmer of genius. That Oliver picked up? That would have well, no, that would have been the fear there from Jerry from just passing the turn and saying, I'm not gonna let you counter my spell. Because Oliver's not playing glimmers, he's playing hieroglyphic illuminations instead. Thanks for the assist there, chat. Jerry really presenting a lot of threats here. Yes. It's a double spell turn. Rogue Refiner is certainly one of the cards the teamer player wants to see most in this matchup. Uh, usually demands a removal spell after the fact and just a very clean two for one in a matchup where total number of resources matters a lot. Second copy of Vraska's Contempt here for Tomiko. That is going to prompt Jerry, though, to make one last Thopter. Yeah, look at Jerry just laying on, making as many creatures as quickly as he can. Oliver, with no board sweepers in his deck, is going to have to fight through these fair and square. And there's that glory bringer. Finally, Oliver is going to counter it, though, with disallow. And Oliver really falling far behind here now, thanks to the land drops. He's still on four. Jerry's on seven lands now. And he's going to cycle a sensor, trying to find lands. He missed again? He's going to have to settle for Search for Ascanta to try to help him find lands next turn, but in the meantime, he's going to take a whoop in here. Six damage, knocking Oliver down to ten. And he's kind of fallen woefully behind here, hasn't he? Yeah, Oliver with a couple missed land drops and Jerry just doing a great job uh, casting threats that represent multiple creatures or multiple cards. Um, he's just put himself further, further ahead on, on pretty much every axis here. Oliver has to worry about his life total. He has to worry about his land drops. Um, and he has to find some way to, to clean up the board. Well, one fatal push to kill a Thopter. Not really what Oliver wants, but it is certainly what he needs to do at this point. He's going to get rid of a Gear Hulk. Another terrible draw for him there. The good news is, is that as Khan to the Sun can ruin becomes a land, and he finds one off the top, too. That unlocks the Torrential Gear Hulk that's already in his hand. Also has a Scarab God available here, too. So we mentioned it last game, the importance of Azkanta actually providing wow. an extra mana the turn that it comes into play. Or the turn that it transforms, I should say. Jerry has a Life Crafter's Bestiary in hand. Oh, but look at that. Supreme Will from Thompson means that Oliver's going to fall down to two. Jerry completely out of gas, passes the turn back. Is Gifted Aetherborn enough? Mm, it helps. So Oliver has two answer cards that can... Uh, Did he not have life, enough black he mana He didn't there? have enough black mana. Yeah, he wanted to play the Gifted Aetherborn to shore up the ground. 
against the two uh, rogue refiners. And then he did have a Vraska's Contempt that could actually get him to enough life total after killing one of the Thopters, but no. He would have needed four black mana sources and apparently didn't have enough. He scooped them up pretty quick. And that means we get a game three. Now, this is really interesting. The two dynamics from these two players, so different, right? If you look at Jerry's, he has been around forever. He has done everything in Magic, right? I mean, now he's really done it all, including winning the Pro Tour. But, you know, he was a grinder for a long time. He wrote articles for a long time. He worked at Wizards of the Coast designing the game. He's done everything. But ever since he's come back, it's just been like he's been smashing, right? I mean, that's when he won his Pro Tour. Now he's on the verge of potentially becoming a national champion. He is the type of player that put in his dues, right? He was the one who was there. He put in the hard work. He took his beats. He, uh, he networked. He, he did some maturing, you know, when he was a young guy into adulthood. And now he's really seen the benefits of all of that. It's all come together for Jerry here in his career. Other side of the table, this is Oliver Tomiko looking to make a name. Right? He's on the opposite end of that spectrum. He's not the one who you know, has put in all the time. Now, to be fair, Oliver's been playing for a long time. He's not like a newcomer to the game or No, whatever. certainly not. But at the same time, you know, this is his one of the chances to say, look, I can play at the big kid table here. Right? If he wins nationals, it's like I'm the national champion. Like, that's a big deal. Yep. This could be his breakout performance that sets his, his pro career role in heart. You know, yeah. He's probably uh, good and sick of us calling him an up-and-coming player. He's probably thinking, "I want to be just a player who's there. <laughs> I want to have come up already." And he's not far from that. By the way, I can also tell you that if he were to win, he would be the youngest U.S. national champion ever. He would undercut. That's right, Matt Lindy. Matt Lindy, wow. Uh huh. By just six months. They were both 17, so if Oliver wins, uh, they would both be 17 years old as, as of uh, winning, but, um, but Oliver would be, would be younger. How old would that make Oliver on the day that Matt Lindy won his national championship? Well, we can run the numbers, but, uh, but Lindy won in the summer of 98. So Oliver wasn't around. He wasn't even around. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver was about minus three years old when Lindy won, which is weird, but it also shows, you know, the breadth of our game at this point. You yeah, know, certainly. Th that we're one game away potentially from having a national champion who wasn't even born. You Oliver know, playing with uh, champion one. with Duress, which is a card that potentially is about as old as he is. Yeah, that's true. Older, certainly. I mean, you've been playing since you were a little kid, too. I've been playing since I was five years old. I mean, that is absurd. Like, did you know how to play Magic or Read first? Well, they were one and the same for me. I, really? I, I, I mostly learned to read by, by trying to figure out what my cards did. Really? That's true. You know Dana? Yeah, of course. You know, she, she knew how to play before she could read. <laughs> she just memorized the picture on the card, and she was able to, you know, verbally be told what the card did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just unreal to me. I knew my DCI number before I knew my Social Security number. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, had it memorized. <laughs> oh, man, that is cool. All right, well, a good start here for Tomiko. He has, uh, on the play, a search for his Conta to kick things off. And Jerry was a little bit slower of a start. No two drop from him here. And he's going to spend turn two just casting a tune with Ether. Not really what he wants to do. So it makes me wonder if he had the Attune on turn one, he could have potentially been missing either the Forest or the Attune itself. Um, or if he was going out of his way to represent Spell Pierce by playing that, that turn one Spire Bluff Canal. Well, if he was, it certainly didn't work on Oliver because he just ran out, search for his Kanta. And I, I like that decision on Oliver's part. Search for his Kanta 
certainly a card that goes up in value the earlier you cast it. And Spell Pierce, just a card that's going to be high value at, at essentially any point in the game. We'll call it any point in the first like eight turns of the game. Spell Pierce is going to be a high value card. So there's no reason to really fear that exchange and outthink yourself. This is interesting. Let's see if Oliver can find an answer here for the Death Court Scavenger. It actually does pretty good work here if it gets to survive. Oh, how about a sensor? I love that play from Oliver. He cycled first, both providing himself the information of what he's going to draw off the cycling and also denying Jerry the information. Jerry might think potentially Oliver drew the sensor off the cycle, but really Oliver had it all along. He was just doing uh, proper clean sequencing there. Oliver also legitimately thought pretty hard about whether he wanted to, to, to cycle that sensor because he doesn't want to leave himself too vulnerable to Bristling Hydra, one of the real killers of the blue-black control deck. But he did and then decide to uh, just get rid of the Death Gorge Scavenger with sensor. Well, this, the writing's on the wall for this Rogue Refiner, isn't it? Yeah, this trick that we've seen Oliver do a couple of times now with using Field of Ruin to enable Revolt. Going to push that Rogue Refiner right off the edge of the cliff. And Tomiko sitting right where he wants to be with no creatures on board for Thompson. Michael working his way up here with this uh, search for his Kanta. This would be his sixth card. And there's number seven. So he binned a pretty good card there, really showing that he values the ability to transform it sooner rather than later. Oh, and he's rewarded by drawing Torrential Gear Hulk. Wow, things really going well for Tomiko here. Potentially on his way to becoming the national champion for the United States this year. These players have already locked up their seats in the World Magic Cup with, uh, with Reed here sitting next to me. But uh, they're still playing for $2,000 prize difference. $5,000 for first, $3,000 for second, and the title. This is a great sequence for Oliver. He can pick up Negate here and then on his turn play Seventh Land Scarab God holding up Negate to answer either one of Jerry's counter spells or potentially a confiscation coup for after the fact. He's going to be even more patient than that. Jerry can't wait to get these Thopters on the battlefield and start battling with them because Tomiko's sitting at 20 life. Jerry has yet to put a dent in his life total at all. You see Jerry hesitates a little bit with Wither Virtuoso but says, now it's in. I'm attacking. And this is going to be a Bristling Hydra now from Thompson. Jerry knows that he can't wait around too much in the face of an Azkanta the Sunken Ruin. Jerry, of course, been on both sides of this matchup. He knows it well. So Oliver, from this board position, wants to exercise patience, but just the right amount of patience. He doesn't want to get his, let his life total get too low and open the door for something crazy to happen. So he wants to, you know, develop his mana and amass as good of a hand as he can without taking too much damage. He doesn't want to make sure he deploys those, uh, that Gear Hulk and or that Scarab God within the next couple of turns. A tune with Ether here from Jerry Thompson. Another draw step that he didn't really want to see. It does buy him, though, a Thopter, as he's not three energy. So not the worst case scenario, but again, not that, you know, potent big spell that he really wanted. No. Four cards left in hand for Thompson, so he still has some action potentially. But the fireworks are going to start for Oliver Tomiko pretty quick here because of cards like Scarab God and Torrential Gear Hulk. Looks like he's going to go for the Gear Hulk right now, Reed. There it is. Go for maybe a Vraska's Contempt here. No, no. It's going to get Essence Scattered, and that's going to get negated. And there's another Essence Scatter there for Thompson, so he fights the fight. But all of this could be could easily be leading the way.
for you know who, Big Daddy Scarab God, and there he is. Oh, hey, look, four mana available. Yeah, Jerry in big trouble here. He has access to two confiscation coups, which are his good answers to the Scarab God. He's going to need to find them, and another attune with Ether there for Thompson. What he does have is a glory bringer, and with no flying creatures in the graveyard for Oliver to steal with the Scarab God, Jerry could try to navigate the game in such a way where he just kills in the air over the course of two or three turns. It seems to be his only chance, right? It's really the only thing he can do. Yeah, unless the top of his deck is very kind to him. So the Let's most basic, you know, simple level play Jerry could make is Mountain, cast Glorybringer. That's enough mana to play around Supreme Will. Uh, although Oliver potentially does not even have Supreme Will in his deck. So the player's having deck list. Jerry knows that he can, he can safely play the Attune first. Here we go. What does Tomiko want here? Oh, wow, look, Jerry didn't Bruce even Lane cast Hydra? the Glorybringer. Oh, he didn't even go for it, huh? Tomiko looks like he wanted a copy of Rogue Refiner on his side. That's going to draw him a card. You'll often see the players keep Torrential Gearhulks in the graveyard so that they have the instant speed ability to effectively counter anything. Assuming that they have a counter spell of some sort in the yard, which Oliver certainly does. The creatures are 4-4s four anyway, so there's not a big difference there. Yeah, you make a good point. Because of the Gear Hulk, Jerry's surely waiting to double spell, hoping the top of his library delivers Confiscation Coup. Maybe he can bait out uh, a counter spell or the, the Gear Hulk with Glory Bringer and then resolve Confiscation Coup. But he's a long way from that happening. Yeah, big attack there from Oliver Tomiko as Jerry falls down to 10 life. Draws his card for the turn. This could be it. Does he have anything to combat the Scarab God? Once again, you see Jerry taking his time here, mapping out his turn ahead of time. Death Gorge Scavenger, not a ton of help there. Can force the issue a little bit with the Scarab God. I, there's only one Torrential Gear Hulk in the yard, right? It's, it's something. You're right, it is something. But, but it's not much. The problem is Jerry can only cast one more spell with the amount of mana he has access to here. Oliver can just counter both spells and then be very close to killing Jerry on his turn. Yeah, the downside to forcing Oliver Tomiko to use Torrential Gear Hulk is that he's going to use the Torrential Gear Hulk. <laughs> now you have to beat it somehow. It's going to shorten your life, Jerry. Indeed. Jerry just de-sleeves the cards that have been brought back with Scarab God for consistency's sake and to know that those ones are 4-4s. Four and zombies. Jerry uh, has a mountain in hand, but a little strange that he tapped two sources of red mana for the, the Scavenger. I guess he should play Mountain Glory Bringer with the plan of exerting on, on one of those 4-4 four, four zombies. I think you're right. But Oliver, he has the answer for it. All he has to do is counter here, and he's going to put Jerry so far behind. Here he goes. Oliver Tomiko disallows the Glory Bringer. And now... Oliver, in his own upkeep, can animate Jerry's Glorybringer, cause Jerry to lose three or four life down to, we'll call it seven. Glorybringer can exert to kill a blocker, and Jerry is forced to chump block at least three creatures. This one has completely fallen apart for Jerry Thompson, and Oliver Tomiko is turns away here 
from being your national champion, the youngest ever in the United States. There it is. Glorybringer coming back. I think it's over, Marshall. And look at this. Essence extraction and a full-out attack here from Tomiko. He says, exert this, and that's going to do it. Oliver Tomiko is your U.S. national champion. Congratulations, Oliver. He is the youngest that we've ever had. And Jerry says, good game. Let's get to testing. Remember, these two are going to be teammates with Reed, but, of course, with each other as well. All right, that is going to do it for the finals here from U.S. Nationals. Oh, hello. Welcome back. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to wait around for a couple of minutes because we're actually going to get Oliver in the booth here. Uh, any lasting impressions there from the tournament or from our last match there, Reed? No, really impressed with, with both Oliver and Jerry. No surprise, of course, to see Jerry playing really good magic, showing up with a great innovative deck. But Oliver, fantastic showing from him. I liked his uh, stoicism. You see, like, he barely even cracked a smile when the tournament yeah. was over. But that's, you know, the sign of a good, careful magic player being able to stay composed. And hopefully he'll be able to, you know, let, let it out a little bit and enjoy the moment uh, once, once he gets up from the table. But uh, awesome weekend of magic. It was cool combining the new standard format with uh, throwing the players into a pretty fresh booster draft format, but just great on the whole. It was really cool to see that, actually, because I think it made this tournament way harder to prepare for for a lot of our, tur our players and stuff like that. All right, looks like we've got Oliver lined up, so Reed, I'm going to kick you loose, and uh, we'll bring Oliver in for his winner interview. Hey, Oliver, welcome to the booth. Congratulations, man. Thank You're you. the national champ. Look, look, what did you get here? Ooh, look at this bad boy. Very nice. So congratulations. Uh, did you know you're the youngest national champion in the history of our country? Nice work. I did not know. But yeah. That's you, sweet. It was only by six months. Okay. <laughs> but uh, just got you, be, there. you just got there. Uh, how was it playing Jerry there in the finals? Was it nerve-wracking? Was it fun? It was. It was a little less nerve-wracking than the top four and also it's a better matchup for me so so it went a little yeah. easier now where did you feel the most pressure in the top eight was it getting over the hump to make it onto the world uh, magic cup team or was it in that last match to become a uh, national champion definitely was the top four match just because that guy beat me <laughs> the two losses that i had this weekend were to him so oh really both yeah <laughs> didn't want to get the third one to him too. oh that's a beating uh but you got him when it counted yep. and you made it on so you get to play with uh, Reed Duke and Jerry Thompson. Yeah. How exciting is this for you it's to get to battle awesome. with those guys? Uh, you, ex you excited to get to learn from them and Absolutely. see what you can get out of for it? sure. Yeah, that's super cool. Hey, also, your brother's going to be happy, right? Yes. <laughs> I got to say hi to Gabe because he'll be watching. Yeah, and, so. and why, why is he going to be so happy? Uh, he loves Reed Duke more than me. So. <laughs> wait, wait. He loves Reed Duke more than you love Reed Duke? Or he More than he loves me. <laughs> no, he's yeah. your brother. <laughs> he keeps telling me, he says that I have to tell Reed Duke next time I see him that he's his biggest fan. Okay. So. <laughs> well, you're going to be seeing a lot of Reed Duke. Uh, yeah. He said that you live in, uh, in roughly the same area yep. in New York. So, you know, maybe you could even uh, hang out with Reed a little bit and get some testing in for the yes. World Magic Cup or something like that. Hey, was there anybody you wanted to thank or, or to say since uh, you uh, get this big moment? I have to thank my pro tour group. We worked on this blue black list for a while. And we come, we came to like some cool tech cards, like the uh, the Glenn Sleeve Siphoner. Dude, those and did work yeah, for you too. That definitely helped out today. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, congratulations, Oliver, on a making it to the World Magic Cup to go represent our country. We're all going to be rooting for you in France here in just a couple of months' time, and of course, on this right here, yes. you are the national champion for the United States and the youngest one ever at that. Congratulations Thank you so and much. great work. All right, that's going to do it for our broadcast here from Virginia. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate you taking the time to spend the weekend with Reed and I and, of course, Maria and JVL as well. That is going to do it for this one. We'll see you next time.